Hi there, Waltoners. I'm Jack, and this is DSMI Newscast. And today, I want to talk about some Disneyland-related topics, as we have the Avatar experience that's going to be coming to the Disneyland Resort. We've got the Disneyland 4 proposal, which should hopefully be wrapping up fairly soon and making its way through the final steps of the approval process. And then also, I want to briefly talk about this Avengers e-ticket attraction that was announced to be coming to California Adventure a while back as well. But mainly today, what I want to talk about is this Avatar experience coming to the Disneyland Resort as you know this whole thing began early on in 2023 when seemingly out of the blue it was just officially announced by CEO Bob Iger that an avatar experience of some sort would be coming to the Disneyland Resort and since then you know over that course of the year we had quite a few mentions of this avatar experience peppered along the way but no such details were given of what this experience would be. And while that all kind of changed around two weeks ago when Disney decided to suddenly reveal this piece of concept art for the Avatar experience that's going to be coming to the Disneyland Resort. And although it was titled at the time as being a creative inspiration piece of artwork, this Blue Sky artwork does give us all a good understanding of what Disney is intending in terms of the scale and scope for this project. And in actual fact, at the time, just around a week before that artwork dropped, I actually did mention in a video a very brief overview of what I'd heard was going to be part of this Avatar experience, and it did line up quite well with what we saw in the artwork. So I said I'd do a more in-depth video on the topic. So let's talk about everything we know so far about the Avatar experience. Let's talk about the logistics that will go into making it happen. And then also talk about some of the rumored details of what could be within this experience. And I think that's actually a good place to start. We should probably talk about this term experience. You know, this word keeps getting thrown around out there. And I see a lot of people wondering, you know, what does this exactly mean? And what I would say is don't read too much into this experience tag. As oftentimes, when it comes to Disney marketing speak, they have their own kind of language. And Disney marketing like to use it as kind of a catch-all term for everything within a Disney park. And they also like to use it when they don't want to necessarily specify exactly what a project is. And a great example of this is Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, as that was famously announced at the D23 Expo in 2015 by Bob Iger as being two Star Wars themed lands on stage. And then in 2016, in a special program celebrating Disneyland's 60th, it was announced as being a Star, Star Wars, Wars experience, experience, despite it still being a land planned for Disneyland and Disney's Hollywood Studios. So despite them using the experience term from time to time, don't read too much into it. And clearly, if we look at the artwork, it's quite clear that this Avatar experience is going to be some sort of avatar themed land. And then that brings us to the next question here, which is where could this realistically go as it's going to need quite a sizable piece of land to make it work and i can tell you from what i've heard supposedly this avatar experience is going to be going into disney california venture that's what's being rumored at the moment is it's going to be going into disney california venture and the location is the corner of a park where hollywood land and the backlot area currently is and you know that would mean you've got roughly around three to four acres of space to work with in that corner of Disney California Venture. As after all, there's quite a bit of unused dead space, you know, locations in that section of parks, such as Stage 17 isn't being used for anything. Hollywood and Dine isn't being used for anything at the moment. And then, you know, to free up that space of three to four acres for this Avatar experience over there, you'd also have to say goodbye to the Monsters Inc. attraction as part of this plan for an Avatar themed land in that section so you know they've got some space to work with there but the reason why we're hearing Disneyland 4 being mentioned in the same breath as the Avatar experience it's actually mentioned in the same sentence by Josh Damara in an article is because it all depends upon that happening for them to then build the Avatar experience the way they would like to as when it comes to the Disneyland Ford proposal it's about long-term planning for the resource and long-term growth over the next three decades, 28 to 30 years of expansion to the Disneyland Resort. But in the immediate future, this Disneyland 4 proposal is about making it work so therefore they can expand the existing parks. And the first thing I think they'll want to do is move forward with relocating some of the infrastructure, some of the security and things like that within the Esplanade over to the other side of Harbour Boulevard. As after all, Within the current plans for the Disneyland 4 proposal, they've 
even said they want to build a new parking structure over on the other side of the Harbour Boulevard and then connect it back to the main section of Disneyland and Disney California Adventure. And this kind of ties in with the Eastern Gateway proposal, the project from back in 2017 that fell by the wayside. And if they were to move forward with something similar to that, but obviously modify the plans to make it suitable for the rest of the businesses on Harbour Boulevard, then if they were to relocate the bus loop area over to the other side of Harbour Boulevard, that would mean they could expand out that corner of California Venture and make this avatar themed land area take it from around three to four acres to maybe five to six acres in size instead. And yes, I know it's still smaller than Pandora, the world of Avatar over at Animal Kingdom, as that measures as around nine to 10 acres in size, depending on if you measure of the backstage infrastructure as well. But a new six acre land being put into that corner of California Venture, I think would be a massive plus to California Venture as a whole. But then we got to come to the more heavily rumored section of this video, you know, what will be within this land? And just by looking at the artwork, I think it's fairly obvious straight away that this is heavily inspired by Avatar 2 Way of Water. As you know, the landscape is very reminiscent of the reef village that we were introduced to, that environment within Way of Water. And then the rock work in the background over there is clearly the cove of the ancestors that was seen within Way of Water. So clearly that's where we're going to be taking inspiration from for this new Avatar themes land. You know, it's not going to be a clone of Pandora the World of Avatar, which was obviously themed around the 2009, the original Avatar movie. Instead, this land is gonna be based more around Avatar 2 and the future movies on from here as well. So it's very interesting. That's the direction they're going with this land. But then we've got to talk about what will be within the land. And uh, it's rumored that this will be using a major e-ticket boat ride as its uh, main anchor centerpiece attraction for this land and uh, this would be a massive plus to uh, California Venture to have a major boat ride like this because it would be very high capacity and the boat ride in question which is being rumored is supposedly the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean Battle for Sunken Treasure, you know, that magnetic boat ride technology system that we saw from Shanghai Disneyland, supposedly being brought uh, stateside to the US and put within the Avatar land experience. And if we're just looking at the artwork here, those boats in the artwork is fairly similar to the boat ride configuration that we see over in Shanghai Disneyland. So it could possibly be hinting at it being more that level of boat ride instead of a Narve River Journey. It's gonna be a major e-ticket boat ride attraction. And I actually do think if they are to go in this direction with the Battle of Sunken Treasure boat ride system, it will work very well with the Avatar 2 Way of Water uh, storyline. As you know, within that attraction, the Pirates of the Caribbean one that is, they have that 360 degree projection dome scene where they take you from the bottom of the depths of the ocean floor and they rise you right up to the top of the ocean and they could just do that whole thing in reverse and make you dive beneath the ocean down deep like they do in way of water to actually float alongside the uh, whale-like creatures that we saw in that movie called the Tolkien and in many ways this would mirror the kind of overall theme of these two attractions of Flight of Passage and if they are to go in this direction for this ride, it would mirror it with Flight of Passage. As Flight of Passage is all about the connection that the Narve have with the Ikron. You know, riding on the back of the Banshee and the special connection they have with the Ikron. Whereas if they are to go in this direction with this attraction, they could highlight and showcase the special connection between the Narve and the Tolkien, you know, those whale-like creatures in this attraction. So it'd be kind of, you know, tying the two things together, but also making them original by themselves. And if it is going to be using this Shanghai Pirates boat ride technology, that's a massive show building. Now, this is that show building overlaid into that spot within California Venture. You can see it is huge, this show building is. Um, so they're going to need quite a bit of space to make it work. But also the other thing you've got to think about here is sight lines and how are they going to hide this huge show building. And oftentimes, you know, they will just set things further back if they've got the space to actually just hide it out of sight. But in Pandora the World of Avatar over in Animal Kingdom, they didn't do that. They themed the exterior of the show building to hide it because it's such a tall show building, you know, that flight of passage show building. So they 
themed the exterior of the show building instead. And I think that's what we're probably looking at here again within this concept art for Disneyland is this massive rock work with the cove of the ancestors is probably hiding the overall massive show building for this attraction which is going to be very grandiose probably use a lot of force perspective as well but it's going to be very impressive i can't wait to see this happen if this is the direction they're going with with this land and then the last thing which i think might be a bit of an issue in terms of the theming is obviously the monorail as that's going to zip straight through the land and they probably don't want to have a futuristic monorail zipping straight through this avatar themes land as it would probably ruin the theme of the overall land but they'll probably have to find a way to hide it behind something so it's not visible from within the land and then we got to talk about timeline for this whole thing and that is you know when could this realistically open and i think you know there's a couple of dates which the disneyland execs probably have in mind here first one would have been the disneyland's 70th anniversary which takes place next year but you know that's not realistically going to happen you know they're not going to be able to get this thing open in time within a year so <laughs> you know they're not going to be able to do that so the next date they probably got circled on their calendar is 2028 as that's the year that uh, Los Angeles is going to be hosting the Summer Olympics and so if they manage to get this thing open in time for the Summer Olympics there's going to be increased attendance and increased focus on Disneyland Resort and if they had some major to open then you know get those people coming out to see the Olympics to come visit Disneyland as well it would be a great way to tie that in so 2028 might be possible but they'd need to begin work on it immediately this year to get going ready for them but that's where i want to talk about the avengers e-ticket attraction which was previously announced to be coming to california venture as well and that was announced at d23 expo in 2022 and we haven't seen any work happen on this ride yet in that area but the reason why i'm bringing this up is if they do want to have something open in time for the summer olympics in 2028 that space over there is ready to be built on straight away. You know, it's buildable land ready to go immediately to begin construction. Whereas to make this avatar experience happen over in this corner of California Venture, they're gonna have to demo a lot of buildings. They're gonna have to work around the monorail. They're gonna also have to relocate the bus loop before they can even begin to expand out into that corner. So that probably means it won't happen, you know, within that time frame. Whereas the Avengers e-ticket attraction, which was previously announced, that could open in time for 2028 and the Summer Olympics. Quite realistically, that could happen. So for this e-ticket Avengers attraction, what's rumoured with this is it's going to supposedly be using the same ride system that's going to be debuting with the Peter Pan Neverland attraction within Fantasy Springs at Tokyo Disney Sea over there so that opens in june of this year and we'll be able to see what that ride system looks like and how it'll function but it's a simulator ride system with the 3d motion graphics things like that to work with it and that's most likely what we're going to be able to see with this avengers e-ticket attraction as well obviously the avengers e-ticket it was announced kind of tentatively back in 2019 as like a phase two and originally what was planned for this Avengers e-ticket was individual flight. They were wanting to make us all have individual flights so we could sit there with our own you know jet packs on basically and fight alongside the Avengers with individual flight but that ride system didn't prove to be very you know feasible for what they wanted in terms of capacity and things like that and so therefore they've moved in a different direction so stay tuned to that to see what that looks like to get a good idea for this Avengers e-ticket attraction and they'll begin to build on that hopefully fairly soon and then the last thing I want to talk about today is Disney California Adventure as a name you know we've just seen Walt Disney Studios Park over in Disneyland Paris get a new name I don't think it's a particularly good name Disney Adventure World I would have much preferred Disney Cinemagic Park, I think that would be much better, but they went with Disney Adventure World and that's got a new name. And possibly could we see Disney California Adventure get a new name as well after this whole thing. And I think after this Avatar experience opens at California Adventure, I think they will probably have to give it a new name, this park. And personally, if I was to rename it, I would try and keep the acronym the same, DCA, and I would call it Disney Cinematic Adventure Park. So that could work, but I think they're going to have to change up the name in the long run, you know, the next five years of Disney California Adventure as the park continues to grow, because you can grow the other side as well over near Pixar Pier. 
and as it continues to grow this park they're going to probably have to give it a new name but now it's over to you Walton is I would like to know what are your thoughts and opinions on everything that's been discussed today you know I know it's been a bit of a long video we've gone into a lot of different topics but I'd love to know what are your thoughts and opinions on this avatar experience coming to Disneyland are you excited about it what would you like to see in terms of a ride ride system and theming and in, in general and also what are your thoughts on a name change to Disney California Adventure when everything opens? I think it's most likely going to have to happen, so I'd love to hear your suggestions as well. And with all that being said, if you've enjoyed this video for today, be sure to give this video a massive thumbs up as it really does help this channel out. Check out the rest of the videos on the channel, subscribe down below, hit the notification bell, do all the usual YouTube stuff if you haven't already. And I'd also like to give a massive thank you to the official Walsnir Club over on Patreon for always supporting this channel. It's always greatly appreciated. And I'd like to give a big shout out to the official Walsnir Gold members that you can see here on the screen, as well as Walsnir Diamond member Kyle Mahan. And with that being said for today, I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon. Thank you.